Hi, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays But By Me Does. You can see somebody's getting stopped by the cops in the background. All right, we all been there, you know that. That's just not a fun experience. Meanwhile, Jordan's pulling a tick off of his ass. But I wanted to look at this rock exposure right here because I'm kind of having trouble figuring out what it is. Looks looks to be a little metamorphic. I'm seeing some layers of strata in there. Well, uh, one of these spots, but it also looks a little cooked. Looks like it got a little hot at some point in its life. Anyway, we're not here for the rocks, though we always do pay attention to them. We're here because this is one of the few populations, I think there's less than a dozen, of Takate cypress, Hesperocypress forbsii, a rare member of the redwood family that's dependent on fire for regeneration. In this type of habitat, a lot of these plants, turns out, are dependent on fire. Right? This is chaparral. It's a kind of ecosystem with a Mediterranean climate. You get winter rain, you get summer dry, it gets hot as shit in the summer. Hottest season is also the driest, and of course it's prone to fire, but evolution being what it is, many of these plants have adapted, so let's go check it out. Hey, look at this crumbly shit. Definitely looks metamorphic. Does not look uh, sedimentary. Looks like it's been cooked. Beautiful colors in there. You get a nice little beautiful patina it looks like uh before these chunks broke off oh christ maybe some uh water got in there in between in between it uh, those layers right there look at what are they doing over there what are they doing no police are corrupt like mexican police anyway uh we, let's check out see what we got going on we got a uh, bacchus serithroides right here uh nicotiana glaca invasive uh couple like mist spawn up there i can see the cypresses right now the Takati cypress with those little soccer ball looking cones well the uh, rock map the the geographic or geologic map overlay just says this is mesozoic nice which uh is metamorphic so i certainly do believe that got a nice color to it and a nice clang but as we know we pay attention to geology because geology influences plant life and cypresses tend to be a great example of that especially Takate cypress I mean, there's a number of other species that are edaphic endemics. That is, they only grow on a certain type of geology. But Takate cypress tends to grow on really weird geology. You know, gabbro uh, in Southern California. Generally of a mafic or ultramafic composition. It is high iron content and uh, high iron content and uh, high uh, magnesium. Oh, that certainly looks like we're increasing in iron content up there. It's a little red. You can see the cypresses all up there oh the smells the smells of one of my favorite plants in baja mexico Aerodictyon sessilifolium because it's got sessile leaves sessile just means no petiole you can see how the leaves just attached directly to the stalk glandular as hell it's not blooming here we saw it blooming last night in the foothills of san pedro martir beautiful beautiful cymes of purple flowers but it's so fucking fragrant it loves full sun it likes fire all the Aerodictyon species, there's like eight or nine, love, look at how big those leaves are, love full sun, they like to have air flow around them, and they're, most of them are fire dependent. Definite change up in the geology here. What the shit is this? It's maybe slightly metamorphosed, good iron content in there though. They are rather red. Speaking of fire dependent plants, Dendromicon rigida, Dendromicon rigida, the bush poppy, this thing is a member of the poppy family, Papaveraceae, and it just, it certainly does well after a fire. It seeds off and sprout after a fire. They'll lay dormant in wait until a fire comes through, and then uh, the seeds will germinate, and this thing will take off. Look, nice poppy flower right there. It looks kind of like a California poppy, but a uh, shrub version. There's that, that uh, green ovary, which will mature into a little elongated pod. You got all those stamens down there and of course a bifid stigma up top. Those petals just fall off and you're left with that green ovary which will turn into a fruit. Oh, I think I just knocked it off. There you go. There's a, there's a maturing fruit. Tons of seeds inside. Most of them won't germinate right away. They'll lay in the soil seed bank for years. And look at the new shoots. This looks like it got chopped. This bush poppy that got chopped and then it's just coming back up where they feel all all rubbery like they got an accident oh yeah my hands got a little smell to them after rubbing them detecting a little bit of uh iron of course mafic or ultra mafic uh content to these soils the cool thing about cypresses things re-sprouting is anywhere you you find any of the rare cypresses like McNabb cypress or baker cypress aka modoc cypress uh 
Paiute cypress down there in Kern County. Anywhere you go go to the look at the cypresses, you're gonna find other cool shit, other edaphic endemics that are restricted to that bizarre geology. And here's a cypress right here. A nice area. Oh, it's been so long, my friend. This was a great tree for illegal planting, actually, because uh oh looks like there's a little hummingbird nest right there. Thank God I didn't just uh, bum them out. Looks like it's long since been abandoned. It's cute. Uh, anyway, the great... Oh, God, I'm getting whiffs of sea and notice. It smells incredible. This whole fucking habitat smells incredible. So many terpenes and volatiles coming out of the glands and uh, stomata of all these plants. Anyway, the great thing about this plant is it grows fast as hell if you give it full sun, at least in the California climate. It does. It hates heat and humidity. You give it full sun, it'll do really well. I planted a number of these illegally in, uh, in Oakland. They'll also do well anywhere in Southern California, anywhere in coastal California, really, where you can get good enough sun and there's not too much fog. Those cones, of course, will remain uh, closed on the branch until a fire comes through, melts the resin that holds those scales together, and then upwards of 100 to 140 seeds, little tiny seeds, will dump out and regenerate uh, the stand. So oftentimes when you see stands of Tecate cypress, all the trees are the same age. They all germinated after the same fire that killed, uh, killed the parent trees. But normally there's a few, uh, you know, individuals that will survive. What a great fucking tree though, and really cool bark on it too, as you can kind of tell from that uh, orangish stem. Massive Melosma lorina. Yeah, so anyway, you could tell that nice that I was showing you before is not what this is. It looks like that nice, maybe it's a contact metamorphism from whatever this body was, which uh, was quite likely, oh, look at that beautiful manzanita going off of there which was quite likely a magma at one point. This is that beautiful manzanita. Look at that. What a stunner. Not too late to catch it flowering. These guys like to flower really early. Look at all those buzz-pollinated flowers. Ugh. Man, man, manzanita. Arctostaphylos diversity down here is a clusterfuck. Good, good luck, you know? Doesn't seem like it's got a burl so far as I can tell. Got a darker color. So that trunk could be Otiensis, could be Moranii, could, who the fuck knows, I don't know. We'll have to figure it out when we get home. Take pictures of as many characters as you can and uh, deal with it uh, when you're in a, a better spot. You know, both mentally and emotionally. You can see they get kind of large over there. Look at that, there's that cypress everywhere with that beautiful red bark. Looks like we need a fire here, all right? Due for one in the next decade, probably. All this stuff's adapted to it. This looks almost like Gabbro. Maybe not quite, I can't tell. Who, who knows? Definitely mafic or ultramafic rocks. That just means magnesium and iron are quite high, you know, compared to more felsic rocks like uh, granite or rhyolite. But uh, definitely a lot of iron in that soil. Nice, nice road cut right there. Nice geologic exposure. Anyway, here's a genus whose taxonomy is also a clusterfuck, all right? It's very, very species rich in California, northern Mexico, southern Oregon. This is the genus Ceanothus of the buckthorn family, Ramnaceae. They got that nitrogen fixing bacteria in the roots. All, all the different species are just variations on a similar theme, all right? Similar branching structure. It's, it does that buckthorn thing, kind of turns its branches into spines. Some of them do. Uh, and they've all got this similar, generally similar flower structure of sepals alternating with petals with a little nectariferous disc in the center, uh, five stamens. And then of course that you can see right there that the violet, you can see the leaf right here has got a little bit of, a, it's got a lot of wax actually on the underside, on the abaxial surface, it's glabrous up top, kind of heart shaped, right? Kind of, uh, almost kind of cuny eight. And, uh, you can, some of them can turn into almost tree size, but uh, we've probably seen six species in the last three days, if not more. No idea which this is. Again, I'll take pictures, put it out. You know, I'm five years out of my element here. I haven't been in this floristic province in five goddamn years, so who knows? Oh, the floral scent. Oh, that's amazing. So you could see where we go, the changeover from the metamorphic shit, the nice, to more of a mafic or perhaps ultramafic extrusive igneous geology. I guess it could be intrusive igneous too. I'm going to take a rock home with me. You can never have two rocks. Uh, it's just something else to make the customs official horny when they're, uh, when they're going through your shit. Anyway, uh, look out over that beautiful development. You can definitely see we've got uh, an intrusive igneous substrate over there, it looks like. That granite, the notorious bouldering uh, that you get that's so prevalent in Southern California. No development yet. i just seen a mountain biker go by. It's very placid here. Looks like they're building some uh, hideous rich condos and apartments over there. But uh, right now, it's relatively intact like most of Baja, all right? 
The development has not gotten that bad here. Holy shit, look at the new growth on that, uh, that Melosmo lorina. Such an eco ecologically important shrub down here. Remember the Anacardiaceae, the poison oak and mango family. Artemisia californica smells great too. You looking good, buddy? Got Ariagonum fasciculatum as well. Polygonaceae, the buckwheat family. Whole cast of good characters. You know, I learned botany down here. It's been a while since I've been been back. Ah, with every cypress, every rare cypress, you got to upload a photo of the, the substrate that it's growing in. So I'm going to put a, a photo of this uh, this red little, looks like yeah, definitely mafic rock, probably metamorphosed a little bit, up with the uh, Takati cypress observation on an Ah, oh, look, it's a giant ornithostaphylos. Holy shit. It's 20 feet tall. Old growth. This guy's been through a lot, but also at the same time, you know, should they be this big? They're so, they're fire adapted. They kind of need fire. So it's been a while since the fire's come through, but this thing is fucking going off and no doubt hosting many ectomycorrhizal species in the roots. Isn't that right, Sergio? Sergio brought us here. Thank you, Sergio. Actually, I've been to this spot five years ago uh, and kind of lost my mind the same fashion. And many of these plants are so rare. This guy especially is basically a Baja endemic. Only because all the habitat in San Diego County got destroyed and turned into strip malls and freeways. Not not flowering yet. What a fucking great plant. And one of the only ectomycorrhizal... Oh, look at that beast. One of the only ectomycorrhizal plants in this habitat that you'll find fungi under. Plenty of saprotrophs, but if they're ectomycorrhizal, they're basically going to be associated with this. There's no... Oaks, oh, there was a scrub oak back there. I don't, only saw one or two of them. No other ectomycorrhizal shits. That's ectomycorrhizalshits.com. Thank you for uh, listening to my TED talk. Let's, okay, let's see this. You gotta, you gotta bull lead. Of course, ectomycorrhizal. Look at the color on that. Blue on those porocidal, uh, those porocidal gills. And, uh, not porocidal, but poros gills. And then that red color on a the stipe. There's nothing really else it could be associating with here. Yeah, this one is commonly associated with uh, coastal pine, like uh -huh. agrifolia. Right. This is Ceracomelus dryophilus. Uh -huh. There's nothing else here that, that could be associated with. There's no oaks, there's no pines. Cypress is an ectomycorrhizal. It's all arbuscular mycorrhizal. It's all AM fungi. So the only ecto here is uh, this. Mm, it's beautiful bark on these tacatis, man. It gets me every time. You want to see some really beautiful bark, look at Hesperocypress guadalupensis. Endemic to Guadalupe Island. A little bit south of here and about 100 miles off the coast. Get that invasive oxalis that everybody in the Bay Area thinks is lemongrass and tries to eat it. I mean, you can eat it a little bit, but if you eat too much, you might puke. But uh, it's not too bad here. That bark is just fucking... Oh. Boy, I'm just so in love with these... Picates, man. They create such a rich duff. Lots of cool fungal saprotrophs. And then, uh, let's see if we got... Oh, this is all... Is this a pure stand of Tecates? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Someone brought a little window box of... Uh, I wonder what that was. Ah, oh, it smells lemony, too. Oh, we got a gall on here. Is that a gall? Or are those just the megastrobli maturing? Thorn's hair streak, really cool little butterfly. Uh, this is the only host plant for it, the Cotty Cypress. Move this little flower pot. There's a little buddy in there, so we're just gonna took some photos and put them down. Over here, yeah. Wait, wait, what's this? This is a, this is a nice one over here. What's going on with this? Yeah, there's hundreds of these around here. It's an Entheloma from subgenus Cyanula. So it'll have pink spores and beautiful like midnight blue colors on both the cap and the stem. God, this, oh, wow. So what do you think this, what species might this be? Entelomas are really hard. They need microscopy or sequencing. But once we do the microscopy and sequencing, we'll be able to identify this pretty easily in the field. All right. Let's see what, oh, yeah, you got a nice little setup right there. Oh, it's lovely color. Oh, shit, I just stepped on some fuck. Yeah, bad boy. Oh, wow. That's a really nice, that's really nice right there. Look at those gills. You get a nice money shot of those gills. Oh, they have marginate gills, don't they? So there's like dark colors on the gills. It's called marginate. So a lot of people would call this Entelomus cerulatum, but the real Entelomus cerulatum doesn't occur in North America. 
We're right at there. They're eating cypress stuff, obviously. Yeah, there's a lot of mushrooms that like cypress stuff. You find a lot of Entoloma, Lepiota, Leuco agaricus, Hygrosibi. Right here we got a little. Right here we got a little uh, truffle, a slimy bastard. Yeah. So what's going on here? Why is he so slimy? Well, I cut it in half with the razor blade, and yeah, it's extremely slimy on the inside, and kind of has real dark marbled texture as well. How'd you find this truffle? Uh, Jordan spotted them just coming out of the ground. They're not, they weren't buried. Like you could see them. Some of them were pushing up the duff, and others were already poking out. There's um, there was a bunch of them around. And they have kind of a funny smell. It's like almost sweet, but sort of like chemicals. Yeah, underneath Adenostoma right here. See and note this. Takati cypress. You got this uh, scrub oak species. Not sure which one. Haven't uh, looked it up yet. Uh, and then you got these over here. These are cordinarius, you said? Yeah, those are cordinarius. Yeah, so there's there's the oaks are doing some of the ectomycorrhizal handiwork as well. Oh, they got that flanged base. That's pretty cool. What do you think? Yeah, that's called a marginate base. What species is this, you think, you know? Uh, let's see. That. Um... It's in uh, the Phlegmaceum group. Antaloma's gorgeous, look at that. With the tree that's generating all the duff that it's eating. That's a beautiful clump. Turning cypress duff, all that resin filled cypress duff into soil. Oh God, it smells good. Look, there's the moon, full moon rising. See that? We're too busy fucking around in the bushes looking at the ground, but we can still take time to appreciate the moon. Look at it. God, the smell. I wish there, there's so many places I go, I wish I could share the smell. It's just uh, it's such a happy thought when you're in places you don't want to be. And there's that oak that's hosting that uh, cordonarius. Oh, anyway, here's a nice boulder of the, uh, the geology here. A nice boulder of the rock that's causing the geology. Looks like it might be some sort of uh, intermediate uh, gabbro, almost. Like between basalt and gabbro in terms of cooling time. It does weather to red. As you can kind of see happening there. And as we've seen throughout the entire substrate. Ah, cool, cool chaparral epicinia. Cool chaparral member of the mint family Lamiaceae. You got the old inflorescences there. Little, little paper lantern smells really good. Opposite leaves. Oh, fucking mosquitoes are out, god damn it. Wonderful plant right there. Beautiful night to be out fucking around looking at mushrooms and plants in a cypress grove on mafic soil. A peculiar geology. There you go. There's all Encinitas. You can see those rich condos. I wonder at what point those will spread over here. Hopefully not for a while. But, uh, you know, the older I get, the more of this shit I see. Maybe come back in 10 years, this will all be developed. Who knows? That's why it's important to document it now. Anyway, you can see the ocean over there. Oh, that's nice. Well, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Oh, look at that giant boulder or whatever this fucking sub. It, it, I, I'm going with intermediate between gabbro and basalt. Darker color. It's mafic on the uh, the chemical spectrum, and uh, it looks like it's got some phenocris in there. Some shit that uh, we maybe you know was still solid, hadn't melted with the rest of the matrix, and weathers to red. That's the big giveaway here. It looks like they just cut this fucking road too. It's not on the satellite map. Uh, which is a shame because I'm sure development is coming. Uh, they probably cut it for a reason, not just for the mountain bikers. I was actually looking for Fermanodendron mexicanum, a rare plant, a rare member of the cotton family Malvaceae that occurs in this kind of plant community. I'd be amazed if it wasn't here. It might just be dormant. The seeds germinate after a fire, but they can also germinate after disturbance by, uh, you know, something like building a road. You know, you get seeds in the soil, the road comes through, scrapes, scarifies the seeds, they germinate. But uh, I've seen it before in this exact same plant community, on this exact same geology. I'd be fucking amazed if it wasn't here. Really cool plant. Giant red flowers and maple-like leaves covered in stellate trichomes. Gonna be able to Jordan here is taking a liking to the bush poppies. See, these little, they, they may not be ready yet. They're, yeah, they're ready when they'd be hissed, but who knows? They might mature if you take it off. But those seeds are good. You know, they may not germinate for 20 years, but uh, they can be a hard plant to grow. They like full sun. They like... They don't like any summer water once established. They like it rocky. 
There's two species in the genus Dendromicon. Heart 40i from the Channel Islands is a little bit easier to grow, but uh, another fire sprouter.